Good evening, welcome to the overnight edition of From Day One. Art Bell is... No, oh, sorry, I had a hair in my mouth. Art Bell is back where he belongs, and now the final section of EVPs to round out that from Dark Matter, as we rock through Dominion. Knows you're alone. <sighs> okay, uh, yeah, I'm going to do it right. once more so everybody gets it straight. Here it is. Are you by yourself? How big are you? I 
need any more encouragement than that. Of course, fortunately for you, you didn't hear it at the time, and it sounded like, frankly, you had already gone. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I, was that, I mean, I heard a door shut. I heard a door close, right? Yeah, yeah, because I was leaving. But yeah, I've done this so much. Even if I had heard it, I would have stayed at that point. This was, if you remember the radio voice that we played earlier where I was getting so upset at the yes. radio. Yes. I mean, I would have stayed just simply out of spite. But you see, that's Brendan. Where Brendan says, hmm, that's interesting, that's the same time when Chunga fills his pants. <laughs> you know, and that's the beauty of having different members in a, in a group like this. I understand. So I'm going to walk down and try and find Brian. So, let me look here. Timestamp is... 
the, the two EVPs were not recorded together. And I don't know if you're prepared to run that, Art, but I just want everybody to remember that little voice there. All right. Uh, remember that little voice there. I need to take a break four ways than one. I had a cigarette. I was still smoking. I light up about now. This is Dark Matter exclusively on Sirius XM Radio. four more EVPs to do. However, we could indeed. Uh, we're going to open the phone lines now. My God, Sirius XM is wonderful, isn't it? A nice, clear signal, so you can hear this, all of this, all the better. Little levity, sorry, required. Um, so I'm opening the phone lines from right now. Um, if you have a question or a comment, the number is 855-REAL-UFO, 855-732-5836. Let's continue um, with number 18 coming up next. And you said, remember that voice. Um, it's burned in, no problem. Uh, what's number 18? Well, number 18 um, is, without a doubt, uh, one of the top two most um, – disturbing and, and heart-wrenching EVPs I've ever heard. It's also, to, to my knowledge, one of the longest EVPs ever recorded. Uh, typically when an EVP is recorded, it's one word or a few, you know, just a few short words or maybe a really short phrase. Uh, this EVP is uh, nearly a minute and a half long wow. in its entirety, which is a, a, an eternity when you're talking about EVPs, it was recorded in uh, that stock exchange building that we were, you know, I was telling you earlier that this thing got into, you know, uh, its birth as a stock exchange building and talking about livestock, uh, cattle, and, and, and horses and the like. Right. In its lifetime, it was a variety of things. It was a, uh, you know, an insane asylum, and it was a, uh, you know, a, a small hospital, and it was also a rehab uh, facility. At one point, there had been numerous deaths. Uh, there was a mass murder there at one point. There was a you know, a bunch of suicides. There's been a lot of agony and trauma and pain in this building. Right. Uh, we recorded this EVP, and again, you know, this is it, just it, incredibly sad to listen to. I want to warn everybody ahead of time. Very, very sad to listen to. Uh, it is what you're going to hear was recorded in a room that was uh, once a surgical suite inside this building. Keep in mind, there's no running water. There's not been any running water in this building since the early 1970s. Uh, we set up a laptop with a condenser mic in the surgical suite, which is on the main floor of this building. And we left. Brendan, Barbara, other members of the GIS and I left the building. And we had, Brendan, how long was it? About 25 minutes oh, yeah. of silence. Yeah, easy. easy. You can hear, you know, a, a, you know, random cars passing in the back. And then this happened. And it is absolutely stunning. What is it we're going to hear? It's the, uh, boy, there is no tactful way to say this. Uh, it is the drowning of a little boy. Uh, right. And it, the voice sounds eerily similar to the EVP that you just heard. It's, if you listen carefully, you can hear two adults. What sounds like a, 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 a male and a female to me. And you'll hear a little boy repeating over and over and over again, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. You'll hear splashing around, banging on the side of the tub. And then you'll hear a woman say he can't breathe, and then a man in a very dark, foreboding, very evil voice, you know, say he can't breathe. And then you'll hear a very deep thud, and everything goes silent. There it is. It stays silent. There it is.
the hearing the voices was very difficult. There was hum in that recording. Yeah. Which is too bad. Um, but clearly, though, the water, <laughs> that was easy to hear. Mm-hmm. You know, when we when we first found that, uh, we listened to it as a group, and not one, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. Yeah. As we heard that, in fact, there was a, a debate between, That's you know, Brendan, Barbara, and myself as to whether or not that was ever going to see the light of day. Uh, we we almost just erased it and said, you know what, that's that's too much. That's way too much. Yeah, Barbara, who is not in favor of this angle of the whole thing, I would have imagined, uh, probably would not have wanted to play that. She didn't. No, she she didn't at all. And it was really me pushing them to try and get it on your show and on my show uh, that, that she kind of begrudgingly agreed. Uh, but even Brendan was, was opposed to it. Yeah, it was kind of realizing, you know, we do this for a reason. I mean, we, we treat these ghosts as people. I mean, that's, that's how we've done this. And then to hear something like that, you can only hope that's a radio station. And it goes back to my whole thing of rationalizing. <laughs> yeah, and are you no, that that's no <laughs> radio station. Right. Oh, no, 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 no. Number 19. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so number 19. This is in the same building, and you hear me drop my recorder, and it, it was actually for the time. This was 2005. Right. It was an expensive digital recorder. And you hear me say, oh, well, that can't be good. And then all of a sudden this woman just says, broke my neck, which we later found out that happened in that building. Really? She doesn't sound too happy. Uh, yeah, she is very, very upset. All right, number 19. All right. There was some kind of crime. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There was absolutely a crime in that building. There was, I mean, uh, this place, like Jimmy had said, I mean, it's everything from a stock exchange building and stock livestock to, sure. you know, mental institution. Uh, there was a double homicide. There were suicides. And we found out one of the homicides was a guy breaking a woman's neck. So this, you, you could almost consider this contemporary information because we didn't know that at the time. But okay, here, here, here it is one more time. Let's...
messages of, you know, somewhat delusional messages of hope. And so when we got that humming, it sounds to me, uh, again, you've got that weird kind of phasing and that weird kind of warble as she's, as she's humming. But it sounds to me like she's just kind of zoned out and she's just hopped up on methadone or something and just kind of mumbling slash humming to herself. Yeah, and it's almost like you can just picture the woman walking down the hallway. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. All right, I, I want to turn the audience loose on you two, but we've got one more here, and then a quick break, and then we'll go to the phone. So, um, number 21, the last one we've got tonight. Okay, so this is a private residence, um, and we had to say this is a private residence, so I can't even tell you where it's at, because, okay. yeah, we were kind of forced to. Um, but it's uh, one of my, again, standard questions that I ask when I go out. I'm just saying, how old are you? And then this woman says, he's so little. Here it is. How old are you? some of these EVPs previously, there's no question about it, um, I asked specific, for a very specific reason, that they be a mixture of old and new. The reason for that is simple. Um, everybody has to remember that we're now on Sirius XM. We now have a new audience of, um, I don't know, 27 million people, something like that. So, obviously, uh, in trying to get some up to speed and uh, allow the audience to enjoy some of what has transpired in previous years, I wanted a little bit of both, and that's what we got. It was kind of a mixture of the old and the new. Gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you. Are you uh, ready to take some questions from the audience? Because they sure do have them. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, then here it comes. Uh, Dark Matter, you're on the air with uh, GIS. Hey, Art, this is Eddie in Arizona. Hello. Roswell from Belgium, sir. Thank you. Um, I uh, record music and record voices for a living. So I wanted to ask um, your guests how uh, they uh, explain how the EVPs take on the reverberation and the sound of the room if the EVPs aren't actually being recorded or being heard by the human ear. Well, you know, Eddie, it's it's uh, this is this is Chunga, it's Jimmy. Um, I'm I also am in music production. That's what I do. That's kind of my day job. And uh, you know, my answer, Brendan may certainly have a different answer. My answer is I don't know. That's why it's called a phenomenon, uh, <laughs> because we we have absolutely no clue as to why the echoes and the sound reverberations uh, can be picked up, other than they're just speaking at a frequency that our human ear can't hear. And that, that's the thing. I mean, we've said this for years. We we don't know. Again, it's a phenomenon. It's uh, to explain, especially in the mausoleum, because it has that the high marble walls and the yeah, cathedral. That, like, you know, yeah, but you know that implies though that uh, that it was actual audio. That yeah, it was actually rounding reverberating and, off the walls. And also, are the uh, recorders? They record the same frequency that the human ears can hear. It's twenty hertz to twenty thousand megahertz or twenty megahertz. So the human ear can hear that. And so the that's recorder sticks that as well. Yeah. That's the point. I, is, I, how do you explain it? How can you and not I hear look it? Look at like the hundreds of people that have done it and just say, okay, well, I, I didn't think this existed. And I 
don't think that the that's really, really protection. You know, for those who are skeptical, I say go get yourself a recorder. Well, you a don't. Mic. At this point, you don't even have to get a recorder. I mean, use your, your smartphone. Do it. Yeah. Okay. And use your more. smartphone. I don't care. Although you probably need more volume to listen. Well, I guess with headphones it'd be. Yeah, right. headphones. Yeah, you're yeah, yeah. That's that's how I've been listening to them, Art. And with the fidelity, true serious. I mean, it's it's really uncanny how much you can pick up, especially the first three that you did. It sounded like the the EVP, the voice, wasn't even taking on the, the reverb characteristics of the room at all. It sounded like they were in like a a dark chamber, and you know the investigator's voice sounded like it was in like a plate or a hall in a, you know a much smaller room. Which right. I thought, well, how can that be? And then the later ones, you know, the last fifteen or so you did, uh, the voice, the reverberation sounded almost exact. To yeah, and I think you know, a lot of that has to do with, I mean. The difference in what we're using, I mean, how we're recording stuff. The ones that were played later were, there were more, um, traditional analog recordings, uh, in the, in the later EVPs that you heard. Uh, the ones that we played first were, were some of the newer, more digital ones. Uh, but again, that, that, that offers no explanation whatsoever. So do you guys believe that, um, that you, the, the digital is better than the analog? As far um, as recording EVPs, or have you have you noticed a difference? Even with the with the audio artifacts and things, especially with the digital stuff. Let me tell you this: I know people that will drop hundreds of dollars on really top end digital recorders, and it's been our experience that you know the traditional uh, cassette tapes and lower end uh, digital recorders tend to work better simply because they don't filter out as much white noise. So it allows us to kind of to differentiate a little bit easier. But again, that doesn't mean that the, the higher end stuff isn't going to pick things up. We use a very expensive condenser mic uh, and we get you know lots of data from it. So um, again, we can't really point to one thing that works better than another. They're just kind of different. Do you guys process EVPs at all or is there any type, uh, type of processing with the digital recorders as far as like uh, bringing the noise levels down or any compression or things like well, that that might I, add artifacts? No. No. The only thing we do, I, I mean, we process as far as taking out any white noise that might be there as the mixer didn't, you know, take out. But what uh, about the recorder? Uh, recorder as you're recording them. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like the recorder stuff, yeah. We had to process that, especially when it was analog. I mean, because you have the motor head, you have, I mean, you have moving parts that are... Yeah, you know, I could actually hear the motor head in one of them. Exactly, yeah. You could tell that was the older one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and also to keep the credibility of the GIS, there's something that, that I, you know, I feel I have to tell you, because this is my occupation, is, you know, using, you know, Pro Tools and Ableton and, and you know, as a lot of these uh, different software programs, uh, because that's my occupation, I don't actually do this. Uh, all of this stuff is actually done by Brendan. I don't touch it at all because I don't want anybody to get the credit, you know, to think that, you know, I have in some way, because I'm, I'm a professional at it, I have in some way manipulated anything or over-processing it. Yeah, so I don't touch it. I, I don't touch it at all. It's all done by Brendan, who does not do that for a living. Right. Because it sounds the voices like the are, are what they are. Oh, thank you. The voices are what they are. And as I said, if you're skeptical, go try it. Yeah. Absolutely. Go try it for yourself. Now, we've done that in times past, and inevitably I get all these people coming back to me in email, sending me EVPs, telling me, oh, yeah. People don't realize this goes back to the beginning of sound, to Alexander Graham Bell and on from there. <laughs> kind of like what we said before where, you know, people say, well, you're skeptical and, uh, hey, you know, we tell them to go try it, and then they say, well, you guys have some kind of uh, companionship or partnership with Sony, or and that's why you're telling us to go try it, because then we're going to go out and buy a Sony recorder, and we're going to, you know, you it's you can't win. I, and we don't want people I know, I know, to I know. do that. Like, you, you want to know something, too? I'm going to throw you kind of a curveball here, Art. This goes back to, you know, back in the days of Vaudeville, when they were trying to find... Uh, ways to amplify voices in theaters, they would use copper wiring that would run down through the perimeter of a theater, and they, they would try to find, I don't know how much you know about this, but, you know, actors would report hearing voices 
uh, picking up EVP off of this copper wiring, uh, out of this reaction in theater. And so, you know, the reports of EVPs and this phenomena going on goes way back to before there was any sort of electrified sound. And and it, it would, you know, challenge yourself. Go read this stuff and grab a tape recorder and go out to a cemetery and just try it on your own. And when you do that, it's like somebody opening up the window shade to an entirely different world when you know yourself that there was nobody there with you. And yeah. yet you have All right. Them. All right. Dark Matter, you're on the air with the GIS. Hi. Yes, hello, Art. It's a great honor to speak with you and your guest. Um, I want to reference a couple of uh, um, things from Whitley Strieber's book, The Key, um, in, in regards to the uh, why the uh, that comes through his children. Uh, the okay. one thing, the one reference is the acts of life affect the appearance of the dead in every type of detail. Everything is imprinted upon the soul. Okay, you don't have a very good connection. Say that again, please. I'm sorry, I'll say it a lot clearer. The actual life affect the appearance of the dead in every tiny detail. Everything is imprinted upon the soul, often in surprising ways. Most dead appear as innocent children, longing for essential lives, hoping that the body will be sparked at this time. Wow. Okay, yeah, that, that seems to be spot on. Um, were you gentlemen aware of that? Well, yes, uh, yes and no. Um, because they, I mean, that's a very common, that's a very common belief. Uh, however, there, there are many common beliefs with regard to children and the dead. Uh, you know, some people believe that, that, you know, when, when you die, your soul, uh, your, your persona, your, your visible appearance looks as though you're in the prime of your life. Some people, well, again, I'm, I'm no expert on any of this, but you have a disproportionate number of children, uh, recorded. I mean, there's no question about it. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, Dark Matter, you're on the air with GIS. Hello. Hello? Hello? Yes. Oh, hello, yes. This is, I, I'm Ernesto. Nice to meet you, Roswald, and everything. Thank you. Uh, what I wanted to say was I actually had an experience, uh, one of those rare ones, with my sister. So it was uh, verified. You know, and it was actually, it was, you could say an EVP, except we did not record it. And instead we heard it live in the room. It was really odd. She had some loud music on, electronic you, music. Wait a minute, you heard it live in the room? Yes, a voice. And it was oh. very rare. Yes, and what is really interesting is it sounded very much like your demonic sample. It was really interesting when you said that and you played some of those. And what happened was it sounded like a very large whisper. Mm. And and no, excuse me, sir. I'm, not, a, I'm right. not an expert on cell phones, but you sound a little demonic yourself <laughs> right now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> connection. I forgot to split. Uh, hello? <laughs> yes. Hello? I'm so sorry about the switch from Bluetooth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> and so what happened was I had said some remark and that was very strange because it also it was in a way responding to my remark it was something like we had just moved into that new house and I had said oh maybe things will be okay now and at that moment I was looking out a window and a voice very large whisper that was demonic a bit said what makes you think you're okay like that and uh, at at the beginning, part of that sentence happened. I thought it was my sister, so I was turning back toward her, but I thought it was so odd. And as I looked at her, I noticed she was turning toward me in the same way, with the same look on her face. Like, what is that? Wow. And it was between us. So we even tested it after that, and she kept replaying the same song five seconds, ten seconds before, but it never had a voice. It was really strange. Hmm. Boy, do I appreciate that story. That, that's pretty wild. Uh, well, it kind of goes back to that private residence that we yeah, Have you two heard of uh, out loud EVPs before? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of times. Not that I, rare? 
We've got well, they, they're not common. Um, I, I don't. I wouldn't call them extremely rare, but you know, we've we've gotten uh, a lot of uh, activity where you can visibly, uh, or I guess audibly, I should say, uh, hear screams or yells or footsteps. Or uh, I've investigated a an old hospital out out in kind of a, in a small town called Tooele out here in Utah, and uh, it had uh, it just shrieks. A woman just shrieking as though she was being attacked, and it was recorded on audio, but it was also audible to our ear as it was as it was happening. Okay, dark matter, you're on the air with GIS. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I hear you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, this, uh, I have a question from California. I have a question for the guys. Um, back in the seventies, I used to see ghosts as, a, as an older kid. I'd say I was about ten years old. Um, I don't see them anymore, and I don't know the reason for it because I, I used to see them a lot. They always, they always be uh, interested in my younger brother in his crib. I'd always wake up and see them. They knew I was. They knew I could see them. Um, they were always interested in him as a baby, but I don't see them or hear anything anymore. And it's, you know, I'm just curious if. if if it's something that you lose, or what's no. the reason of being able to see him at one time and then never having that thing again? Okay, gentlemen. Here's the thing. I, when you're younger, and I've talked about this I, I don't know how many times, uh, you are trained to, I mean, not trained, but you don't. Not trained is really the way to put it. Yeah, that's, that's kind of it. I mean, when you get older, you get trained not to see certain things. You that's get right. trained you're going to be crazy or judged as, you know, when you're younger, you're innocent. You don't know that that shouldn't exist. I mean, my, right, right. the world trains you not to hear these things and not to believe these things. And so your mind exactly. does what it's been trained to do and rejects them. You know, and that's they, why, uh, the, you know, the wormhole, for example. I'm getting these messages as we go on. There are some people who just come on and say, it's baloney. I don't believe one word of it. Well, of course. How could they? Yeah, well, that's, yeah. how I, that's how I started this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing that I've worked really hard on are, is teaching Brendan, you know, it's, you know, to answer this guy's question, yes, you can get it back. You can get it back very, very easily. And one of the things that, that I want to try and just kind of really, really impress upon people is that, you know, if you think that you don't have the ability to do this, first of all, everybody does. Some people have more ability or they, they're, they're, they're more in tune and can do it easier. But, you know, go back to Marlon Perkins' Wild Kingdom or watching, you know, animals in the wild on, on National Geographic or something. Have you ever noticed how you'll have a pack of, you know, impala or antelope and they'll all bolt and dart at the same time sure. and and you you know as mammals we're, we're on this earth as mammals as, as animals just like you know everything else in the uh, in the kingdom and we're blessed or we are genetically imbued whatever you want to call it with certain sensitivities and certain instincts <laughs> that we arrogantly evolve as we age and those sensitivities uh, can very easily come back. And I have found that the more investigating you do, um, the more in tune you become with the spirit world and the easier it becomes over time to, to feel this stuff. And even Brendan, you know, the guy who I've seen objects thrown at him. I've seen the things hit him in the head, lights, and, you know, I've seen attacks on this man, and Brendan will dismiss it as though it's nothing. Even he, the eternal skeptic, is starting to come around and come to me and say, you know what, um, I'm really feeling uncomfortable. You know, what right. is it that All I'm right. feeling? Uh, we've got people to talk to. Dark Matter, you're on the air with the GIS. Hi. Hello. 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 Can you yes, hear me? I hear you. Go ahead. Okay, so here's my question. Um, I'm curious to know if, as a child, I had an entity in my home. Um, I wasn't the only one who saw it. My mom had seen it. My family had seen it. Um, I'm curious, years later, um, having think that I have discovered who or what that might have been, is it possible to have something like that attached? to someone that you will meet in the future? Oh, yeah, that I have not 
heard of. I mean, that's a, that's a first. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know what? Uh, we don't know. Right. Good that's, answer. Uh, yeah. When you don't know, that's the best answer. It really is in this field. Yeah, dark matter, oh, you're on the air. Hi, Art. Hi. Say, uh, uh, thank you for such a great show. I, I don't know whether to turn it off or... or <laughs> I <laughs> One interesting, freaky, spooky uh, show you guys have, and I thank the guests for going out and gathering this stuff. And I got I got two quick questions, and I'll hang up the question. But have either one of you has ever experienced, before you heard the audio on it, either a, a, a room temperature difference or some presence, uh, you know, in, in, in the room where you got the recording? And okay. have, have you ever had anybody actually identify one of those voices on the ID, well, yes, uh, clearly they, they identified some of the people who had specific injuries or mortal injuries in this case, right, guys? Well, yeah, yeah. and we've identified family members that know who, I, get. I think it was voice number three, no, actually, I think it was voice number five that we played the answering machine recording. Right, right. And people identified that as... Okay, all right, and, and, about and the temperature, what about temperature change? Constantly, uh, constantly. Yeah, this is this is one of those things that it goes back to that. You know, the short answer is it goes back to what I was talking about before, where, you know, I, I didn't even realize that I was somebody that was uh, empathic and sensitive to this kind of thing until we'd been investigating for a while, and I was I was recognizing things before the the, the gear was. I was recognizing temperature changes and and things like that before the equipment. How much was, of a temperature change have you seen? Oh, I, you know, 20, 25 degrees. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, hot and cold, both yeah, directions and up and down. Um, we found that it, the, usually the more dark and the more malevolent, uh, the entity is, the hotter it gets. Really? And yeah. And, and the other way around, uh, if it's a fairly benign entity and, and harmless and just kind of interested in you, it it's cold. cooler. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, dark matter, you're on the air with GIS. Hi. Hello? Hello? Yes. Yes, uh, my question is, um, you guys are talking a lot of about, like, the EVPs and stuff like that. My question is, like, the physical, like, have you guys had anything physically happen to you and I, yeah, like that? Uh, the, the answer is clearly yes. I mean, we just heard that Brendan had things thrown at him and hit him in the head and on and on and on. Right? I've been scratched three times on my side, on my ribs. Yeah. Uh, it's, we, we have had things, and again, this is my, my rationalization of all this, trying to figure out how things could have happened where I'm physically having things thrown at me. And, you know, Jimmy just said the exact same thing, that I had something hit me in the head, and I said it was a bat. I, I, when I have it on, on camera, is a light bulb being thrown at it. But, yeah, I rationalize it as it was a bath that hit me. All right, next show, bring the video. You got it. You got it. <laughs> All right. Dark Matter, you're on the air with GIS. Hello. Hello, Mark. Go ahead, sir. Uh, my question was, me and my wife were wondering if uh, we went to a cemetery where our friends have been buried, which they haven't passed away very long, uh, if it would be a good idea to put a recorder out and try to get answers or... Should we just let time pass and then go out? Well, right, here, right. I, I've got a question for you. Uh, if you got a response, would you want it? Yes and no. Mm. So I would say no. If, if okay. your answer is yes and no, that pretty much means no. Yeah, you so, really ought to think about what you want before you go get it. Exactly. You know, the, the great rule of thumb here is if there is any doubt, there is no doubt. Don't do it. Do that. Um, hello there. You're on the air with GIS. Hello. Hello. Hi, you are. This is Glenn from San Francisco, 73 East Asia. Hey, Glenn. Hi. I was wondering if your guests had, um, well, I have a few ideas about eliminating any RF or radio interference getting picked up by their audio recorders by using a small copper Faraday shield and placing it over their tape recorder, and that would 
almost um, give them some confidence as far as not having any RF signals getting picked up and only the audio from the uh, Excellent, excellent, excellent point. All right, um, guys, you know what a Faraday shield is? Yes, yes, of course. And I think I would certainly agree with him. Uh, if you had a Faraday shield around the recorder uh, with pretty tight mesh, um, I would say you could be absolutely certain. But, you know, reflecting on what we heard tonight, I wasn't hearing radio. There's no way. Hey, well, yeah, and again, if there was, if there was, I mean, if there's anything that's even, if there's a shred of doubt, then we debunk it. it it's gone. Yeah. Um, you know, we're very, very critical of our own work. We're far more critical than you guys are of our work. Uh, and if we felt it was necessary to use one of those shields, we definitely would, but we just don't find it necessary. Well, I can see it could be done as sort of a safety factor, but, um, again, having listened to what we heard tonight, there was no way that was radio, no way. Uh, you're on the air, Dark Matter with GIS. Hi. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? I hear you. Uh, I had a question about one of your locations. Uh, uh, and I don't know that this is something you can give out on the air, but by any chance, the Stock Exchange building that y'all visited, is that by any chance the Fort Worth Stock Exchange in Texas? No, sir. No, it's, it's not in Texas. Okay. I can understand that you, you want to keep a lot of these places, particularly private residences, a uh, secret. And I suppose even this exchange, you really don't want to let people know where. Well, and here's the thing. It's not even so much us. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a problem with people, you know, going to these places. We'd actually encourage it. Yeah, it's... it's I mean, we got to a point where there was one location that we had done. Originally, the owner had said, okay, you know what, talk about it, go ahead, promote it, whatever it is. Right. And then uh, they sold it, and the lawyer actually called for the new owner saying, remove every reference to that location possible, like everything. If we oh, I, I talk about the place. Yeah, yeah, so that's where we're very careful about saying anything. Well, such things affect real estate markets, don't they? Yeah, they do. And, they, and you also get break-ins. You, yeah. know, you, you know, not everybody has the best intent, and not everybody's very uh, respectful when they come out to do this kind of thing. And, you know, one window and one rock, and you're in the, you know, you're in the building. So uh, okay. people get very nervous. Dark Matter, you're on the air with GIS. Hi. Hi, would that be me? It would. Oh, great. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, ask the guys, um, uh, while they were uh, uh, doing recording to BBPs, uh, if they've ever uh, felt a presence. Uh, the reason why I ask is because occasionally, uh, sometimes I feel a presence around me, and uh, it's kind of, kind of like a really eerie feeling. And I've been in places where I know people have passed away before, and, and one time uh, it was like uh, I was at work, and and I'm outside, it was like in the middle of the night, and I had this very eerie feeling, and it felt like I had a finger run down my back. But, uh, oh, yeah. It was a presence. Well, and here's the thing. Like, that's the difference, I think, between uh, Chunga and I, is I am the last person that will feel something. I, I have felt something twice, and that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I have had something pretty much scratch slash slap me and then the boy episode that we played tonight other than that I don't feel anything something could beat me on the head and I would not feel a thing whereas I, I can I can pick up you know we had a, a bit of a problem with me a, a, about a year ago where I'm, I'm at the point now where I can pick up entities that are trying to pose as something else when they're lying or being deceptive. And that doesn't necessarily mean they're demonic, but, you know, we ran across a, a male older entity that was trying to pretend like it was a little girl on EVP. And, uh, and I called it out and all hell broke loose. It got really, really bad. And, uh, you know, so it really varies up on the person and their own individual willingness to accept what they're feeling and sensing. Dark matter, your turn with GIS. Hi. Hello? Hello? Yes, oh, hi. Hi, Roswell. Yes. Okay, 
I have a nice story for you, and it was a good one. We, uh, my husband passed away, and he and I made a, a vow that if we could, we would try to contact each other. And so when he passed away, a few months went by. I never felt sad. I always just waited to see if he would come to me or somehow get in touch. And one day, my daughter and I, who I was not really tight with, we were sitting in the kitchen in a very quiet house, and we, she got up and left the room, walked into the next room, and we heard this, ah, and I sat and looked around because it sounded like it went through the whole house, or, and that it, yet it was still right next to me, and I I turned around and looked in her direction in the next room, and I said, was that you? And she said, I was hoping it was you. <laughs> and then we didn't, we didn't hardly talk about it. She still doesn't like to talk about it. But I felt that it was my husband because he knew that I always wanted to be closer to my daughter. And maybe that time he took advantage of that moment, I don't know. But then my father passed away the same year, and they sent my mother to live with me. She was in her night, and she and I are sitting at the kitchen table. Oh, I was never close with my, I was close with her, but we lived, she was on the West Coast, and I was on the East Coast. And I, we were talking, and we heard the same, uh, and we looked at each other. She had this, this deer in the headlights look in her face, and I said, Mom, relax, that's Bob, because he used to call her the Wicked Witch of the West. And <laughs> as a joke, I mean, he, he really cared about her. But but I said, Mom, that was Bobby. And he's letting us know that he's happy that you're here with me and everything's fine. But I will tell you that that sound went through the whole house again. And it was in my, like he was right on my ear. And, and you know, it's very interesting that the, a lot of those audible uh, EVPs that you can hear with your own ear, uh, they're they're almost directionless. They're everywhere and they're nowhere all at the same time. Right. They're very right. difficult to pinpoint. Okay, gotcha. Hold it right there. We were, we've got a final break and then more questions. And uh, what a show. GIS on Dark Matter. Serious and Sam and Action. GIS, the Ghost Investigators Society, and uh, it's been quite a night. Gentlemen, uh, welcome back. We've uh, got a very short amount of time, so I want to squeeze in people who've been waiting, if that's all right. Here they come. Sure. Uh, sure. Dark Thanks. Matter, you're on the air. Hi, this is Mark from Parma, Ohio. How are you doing, Art? I'm just fine, Mark. How are you? Uh, I'm enjoying the show immensely, and uh, currently I'm in Gary, Indiana, because I do drive a truck, and thanks for the shout-out there. Keep driving an 18 wheeler. My comment was uh, I was out in a log cabin with my wife and we had built a fire out the back. And uh, I started taking pictures of the fire. And I had seen the movie with a white noise and I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if uh, old Indian spirits would come through the fire and show their faces or something like that? So since then, I've been taking lots of pictures of the fire. Now, I can't say that I've ever seen any clear faces or anything like that. But I was just wondering if the guys had ever thought about trying something like that, like setting up a flame and using a camera with a high shutter speed to see if they can catch any still in Yeah, actually, it's a really cool question. Um, <laughs> in other words, that's a visual version of EVP. No, it is. But here's the problem. And we've talked about this before, the subjective nature of EVP. When you do something like that, you're getting into what's called Pareidolia. It's it's when you look at clouds and you make faces that you know you you see a bunny in a cloud. It's the same kind of thing. So yes, there could definitely be something there. I'm not going to discount it and say there isn't. But right. at the same time, from our perspective, what makes our EVP work is when it's contextual. I mean, it responds to us, or it's contemporary, or it's it means. I'm with you. No, I'm with you all the way. Um, yeah. it, to me, even though the, the content of the EVPs is subjective, you know, there's nothing subjective in my point from my point of view about what we're hearing. I know what it is. Trump 2086 says people are so desperate to believe in something, we'll just grasp onto anything and hold onto it as the absolute 
truth. In other words, you've got a real skeptic there. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I'd say after listening to all this, if you're still skeptical, then you go try it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hello there. You're on the air. Dark matter with GIS. Hello, Art. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, I gotta start by saying I'm highly skeptical of, uh, ghosts and everything. But with that said, uh, my fiance moved into my house here four months ago. My mother died last year. Now she says that, uh, well, she was sitting at the computer one day and something blew in her face. And, and that's happened on two occasions. But, uh, she come home from work one day and heard yelling inside the house. And as soon as she walked in, it stopped. But uh, other times, she said she's actually talked to ghosts. In the so house. For, I love it when somebody calls up and says, I'm highly skeptical of anything, any kind of ghost stuff, and then tells us a ghost story. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's, that's how I was going to answer this. Is, <laughs> you know, I am highly skeptical, but there is always a but. <laughs> it's like well, I think it's, I think it's good, too. I think it's good. Kind of walk that line, you know. You, in order to be willing to believe, you've also got to be willing to not believe. You know, you, you've got to get that kind of that barometer like right there in the middle. Exactly. And I mean, you know, I know that better than anybody. Because yeah. I've been doing this for how long, and I still not sure I believe. How well, your barometer's more towards I don't believe, but yeah, yeah. I really think what we've heard tonight is really good evidence of something that just is very disturbing. And I, I don't know what it is, but it's certainly disturbing. Listen, guys, um, do you have a website? Do you have a website up? You do, right? Yeah. 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 We've what got, is, what uh, is it? Well, we've got each one. Uh, we've got ghostpix.com, G H O S T P I X.com. Lots of, lots of EVPs there that you can also go to, jimmychunga.com. You can follow us on Twitter, DJ Jimmy Chunga, uh, the Deviant Cook on Twitter. And we're constantly talking about things going on with regard to investigating and, and the paranormal. All right. Well, I want to thank both of you for being here tonight. You're leaving the lines completely full. I'm sorry we're doing that for those of you um, on hold. I'm sorry. So, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Have us back. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, we we'll take more will. calls. Back <laughs> later, yeah. We've got calls and calls and calls and calls. All right, everybody, uh, take care. It has been kind of spooky, frankly, really spooky. And I was glad to be able to present it to you with a clarity of satellite radio. Now, I don't know if that served you to uh, to be more informed, or perhaps a little, a little more scared than you were previously, but it is clear. Don't forget, we've got uh, the Arts Parts, Arts Parts, that's coffee mugs, T-shirts, that kind of thing. Just got it start the other day, but it's at artbell.com. Once again, it's called Arts Parts, and it's at artbell.com. Between now and tomorrow, um, I hope you all recover, and uh, have a great night. It's been my pleasure. Ciao. And that was our bell from October 7th, 2013. With that, it'll bring our night to a close here on From Day One. As always, please make sure you do like, share, and subscribe. Get us to the goal of 50,000 views, 1,000 subscribers. So Boxy over in extra sends us those nice red packages we can send to all of you. And of course, Google puts us on the algorithms. Coinbase, I bought a game that GG, you know the draw on those. And until next time, like, share, and subscribe, be kind to one another, and release the Kraken. As we march this overnight and every overnight here from day one. Have a great night's sleep. Enjoy it. Make sure that the EVPs don't bite. And we'll see you tomorrow.